Mark Cahill has a business degree from Auburn University, where he was an honorable mention academic All-American in basketball. And after spending a few years in the business world, he surrendered his heart to Jesus Christ and asked God to place him where he could use him as much as possible. In One Heartbeat Away, Mark chronicles his conversations with people who are seeking and searching and provides some answers to common questions like, can you prove there is a God? Doesn't evolution disprove the existence of God? Is the Bible true? And most importantly, what happens after I die? And Mark, we've had you with us here on Harvest before. It's always a pleasure uh, to, to get you in the studio. And uh, I had an opportunity to read about through half of this book, and it's just filled with evidence and, and right. scientific uh, proofs, uh, historical proofs, mathematical proofs regarding the existence of God, the reliability of the Bible. Why did you put so much information in, in the, uh, the first part of the book? Yeah, good question, Stefan. Um, what happened was people asked me, the first book uh, I wrote, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven, geared towards uh, Christians mm -hmm. to share their faith. And I just wanted to thank you guys for having me on a couple of years ago. That book just passed 160,000 copies awesome. around the world. Yeah. It's in Chinese, it's in Russian, it'll be in Spanish in just a, a month. We get emails from uh, soldiers in Afghanistan, Iraq who are reading that, so this helped just propel it out there. But people ask me, you spend so much time talking with lost people, would you write something to them? Mm -hmm. So that's what we undertook the task of. Is, and one of the things lost people always ask you is, why do you believe this? Mm -hmm. And right. what they think is, it a blind is leap of that's faith? right. Yeah. You just grew up in it as a kid here, so if I grew up in the Middle East, I'd believe in Islam. Yeah. But that's not true. Is there any evidence to back this? So we tried to show you, and what people love about this book, they've told me, is I used to think the same thing. I thought it was this much evidence and that much faith. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for that. I'm a thinking guy, okay? As I began to study this, and as people read the book, they see there's that much evidence, and all yeah. I need is the faith of a mustard seed to drop yeah. on top of it. Wow. And what kind of response have you gotten so far from oh, One Heartbeat? Oh, my gosh. Uh, we literally... Uh, in a year, we've already gone uh, 80,000 copies in a year. We've had atheists read it, become born again. Agnostics read it, become born again. Muslims read it, become born again. Mm -hmm. Catholics read it, become born again. Prisoners read it, become born again. And these are just stories we've heard. Yeah. Uh, we just got an email from a letter up at a prison in Michigan. This revival hit this prison. They got a Bible. They got my first book and my second book. And things started moving. There was literally a sign-up list mm. at the prison to read my books. Okay, They said officers were signing up on the list. Well, we wow. found this out. So we got a hold of the chaplain, sent 20 more of each book. And they literally said their soul started getting saved. The guy who got it started got moved to another prison. Mm. His roommate's a Muslim. Guy said, hey, you got anything to read? So he gave him one thing you can't do in heaven. Read it in a day. He said, you got anything else by that guy? Said, yeah. So he gives him one heartbeat away. Next day, he walks in with a piece of paper. He said, hey, what's that piece of paper? He said, that's a change of religion for him. Wow. And in prisons, you have to declare religious faith, because if any uprising, they always separate you by religion. And the guy was literally making the decision to change from Islam to Christianity. Right wow. Yeah, it was we, more than a prayer or something they had to put down in writing. That's right? exactly right. He had to make that huge step of faith right yeah, there and say, this yeah. is the decision I'm making. Everybody's going to know it, too. That's, and that's amazing. That's pretty powerful, yeah. Now, uh, looking at some of the conversations and stories, uh, both in One Thing You Can't Do uh, in Heaven as well as One Heartbeat Away, Seems like uh, the Lord's got you meeting some some really uh, interesting people, you know, that uh, many names that we all know and recognize. Yeah, How does that happen? Well, it's funny because I pray for divine appointments all the time. And uh, one, I just run into people in airports. Like in this book, I got a chance to witness to uh, Vanilla Ice. Remember him? Ice Ice yeah, yeah. Baby. Ice I got Ice to talk baby. with him. We sat down, had a 30-minute conversation in the airport. And one thing I'll never forget about him was uh, I asked what he was into, and he was into Scientology. Hmm. And I said, how'd you get into Scientology? And I'll never forget his answer to the day I die. He said, because John Travolta had a talk with me. Hmm. And it hit me, what was John Travolta doing? He was sharing his faith, mm -hmm. okay? So here John Travolta can stand up for a lie, mm -hmm. but us born-again believers can't stand up for the resurrected Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that book I wrote, I said, if you're a born-again believer by the end of this book, I said, make sure when you die, John Travolta is not out witness to you. <laughs> That's what I wrote there. And, uh, but yeah, uh, I got a chance. Uh, Charles Barkley was uh, a roommate on road trips at, when I was at Auburn and stuff. So through him I've gotten a chance to meet Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Magic Johnson, Terrell Owens. And, I just, and so when I meet these guys, I don't want an autograph. Yeah. I want to see your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. So I always end up throwing a question out there, and it just strikes up conversations through yeah. that stuff. Yeah. For uh, folks watching today, you know, as, as we said earlier, uh, statistics say that it's like less than 2% of right. the, ch the people in the church lead someone to faith in Christ every year. Right. And there's a huge intimidation factor, I believe, as part of it, as well as feeling ill-equipped to do so. Right. Uh, how simple is it to just share your faith? Uh, I'm on a plane flight yesterday flying in up here, and uh, I had no one sitting next to me, but across the aisle were a couple guys speaking a different language. So I finally just butted in. I said, hey, what language are you speak? And it was French, was I thought. Start chatting. And Frederick, the guy there, was uh, he sells uranium. 
okay. So I was like, okay, let's talk about dirty bombs and all kinds of stuff. How do people get this stuff? So real interesting guy. So I just said, hey, can I ask you an interesting question? He said, yeah. I said, do you ever think about what's out there when you die? He said, yeah, bingo, we start talking, okay? He does not know what's out there. I said, do you believe there's a God? He said, of course, the sun, the moon, the stars. See, even Romans 1 hit him, creation, okay? Gave him that book. He was reading it on the plane. So this is easy as saying, hey, do you ever think about what's out there when you die? Everybody says yes. What conclusion have you come to? What do you think it is? And you're into a conversation just like that. I think, one, we fear man, but the Bible says, I don't seek the praises of men. I seek the praises of God. Two, if I believe hell's a real place, and we talk about that in the book, if it is, then I can never ask the question, how can I talk with Charles Barkley? Mm -hmm. It's how can I not talk with Charles right. Barkley? See, we ask the wrong question. Yeah. See, I don't have to fear Satan. He's got to fear born-again believers who boldly stand for Jesus Christ. Uh, in One Heartbeat Away, uh, part of the book, you, you deal with uh, conversations and, and experiences you've had with people that have had near-death experiences. Right. And uh, they're not always, you know, looking at the bright white light and everything's peaceful and calm. Right. We had, uh, there's a chapter in this book called The Flames, The Flames. We probably get more feedback on it than anything. But so many people flatline, they'll see white lights and tunnels. Not everybody. Charles Barkley's little brother flatlined. End of his journey, he mm. saw trees on fire, ground smoldering around the trees. He saw a lake of fire in front of him. He literally wow. said he could feel the heat off the lake of fire. I had nurses tell me they had patients scream the flames, the flames flatline and die. I met a lady in January at a, at just at a breakfast buffet at a hotel. Her husband flatlined and died. So uh, they paddled to bring him back. Nothing worked. He died. So they mm -hmm. pulled everything out and wheeled him off on a gurney. Ready for this? Fifteen minutes later, he sits up on the gurney. Wow. Fifteen minutes later. Oh she looked at his face said, honey, what did you see? She knew instantly he saw something. He said he was going down a dark tunnel and all he could hear is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Have you heard that term before? Yeah. Straight out of our Bible, okay? So there's a vapor, a fog around him. He could see the people's faces that were screaming. He kept going down. He literally said two hands of light came in there and grabbed him. Now he told his wife later he knew it was Jesus. Now how he knew that, I don't know, but maybe the light of the world grabbed him and started pulling him up. And when he hit the top of that tunnel was when he sat up on that gurney 15 minutes later. Mm. The wife asked him the question, honey, what was the worst part of that experience? And you think it's anything I just mentioned, not yeah. what he said. He said the worst part was he couldn't bring anybody out of there with him. Mm -hmm. What do you know from Luke wow. 16? There's yeah. no crossing over from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. We all have friends, co-workers. I have direct immediate family members that are gonna go there. How can I not love their soul enough to give them the truth of Jesus Christ crucified so they can be washed clean of all that sin. Right. We're compelled by God to go do that. I'm compelled by that. Awesome. Uh, Mark, your, your stuff is good. It's, it's easy reading, but it's yeah. engaging because it's yeah. real life. And uh, We were talking to lost people. We want to make sure it was very readable yeah. when they did it. Yeah. Uh, you would mentioned uh, you know, having a, something on hand to give to those that are questioning, seeking, engaging in conversation right. with. So, you know, sitting on that airplane seat, sitting in our car talking to someone outside the car, we don't need to have all the answers tucked away in our, in our, in our mind, in our memory. We can have a resource to put into people's hands. Right. I want to do the best I can to answer their questions, but we've literally had employers buy that for every employee. Family members get it for every family member because they just see the use of it, and that adds to the verbal conversations that we're having. Yeah. I want to say thanks for joining us today, thanks and I want to encourage everyone watching this very moment, if there's someone in your life, a friend, a family member, someone that you're, uh, you know, a neighbor, a co-worker, someone that you like, someone that you can't stand, <laughs> but you know that God is, is calling you to reach out and be obedient to the Great Commission to share the gospel, uh, this is a great resource for you to get to be armed with some great information as well as inspiring stories uh, to help you along the way or to put it in someone's hands. And you can pick up One Heartbeat Away at harvest-tv.com. You can just log on to our website there, order it, pay for it. We'll send it right to your door. And Mark, what's your website? Uh, markcahill.org, O-R-G, okay. not .com. It's a guy in Germany who does not like me, so uh, <laughs> he gets a lot of emails. <laughs> so that's real important. Markcahill.org is yeah. Mark's website for other resources and, uh, again, some just great, great uh, equipping to, uh, to the body of Christ at large to help us be faithful to that great commission. We're going to be right back with Ginger Garrett in just a moment. Uh, but again, we just want to say thanks, thanks again for having me. Yep.